Welcome inside episode 709 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains on a game day, the Ottawa Senators are hosting the Nashville Predators tonight at 7.30 to wrap up a four-game homestand. And Ottawa Senators prospects are on the move all around the world. We'll tell you who and where, plus a recap of yesterday's Sen Skills competition. This episode is brought to you by Farm to Fork. Visit farm2forkdelivery.ca today and taste the Farm to Fork difference. You will never go back to grocery store meats. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Senators your first listen on this Monday, January 9th. The show is free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube where the best way you can help the show grow is to like every video by clicking the thumbs up, leaving a comment below, and subscribing to the Locked On Senators channel. Make sure that notification bell is on so you know when shows go live, including the postcast. And Pilsy and I have made an executive decision to leave all analysis of that wacky, wild, disgusting 8-4 loss to the Seattle Kraken. That will all live in Saturday's postcast. Yeah, we can go ahead and burn the tape on that one, Ross, as uh, putting up or allowing an eight spot to the Seattle Kraken, eight different goal scores, and all goals scored at even strength. Ross, our friend Ian Mendez with The Athletic wrote an article, and you know it's bad when statistics match this franchise back in the early 90s. The Ottawa Senators hadn't let eight even strength goals in since way back in the 90s. So that is not a place this Ottawa Senators team wants to be or compared to. So yeah, let's forget about it. Let's move on. It was one game, one bad, bad, ugly, nasty, terrible game, but we're moving on. Just like Tim Stutzla said after the game, I would trade any of his of my three goals for getting a win tonight. Tim Stutzla had his first hat-trick with fans in the buildings. Of course, he scored a hat-trick here in Winnipeg, but during the COVID shortened season, you might remember all the kids throwing their hats over the fence at their place when it was Brady, Norris, and Kachuk, all, or sorry, uh, Stutzla, Norris, and Kachuk all living together. Um, great moment that was at a time where everyone needed something to gather yeah, around. That was fun. Together. But it was awesome to see it at home, fans in the building. However, the second goal where they tied the game 3-3, certainly a bit more oomph in the celebration than the third goal that made it 7-4 at the time. Okay, that's enough of looking back. Let's now take our step forward to the Sunday skills competition. We had some surprise winners, Pilsy. Mark Kastelik is the fastest skater on the Ottawa Senators? Huh? Yeah, that one really surprised me. Uh, but hey, that's why going with a take like Tim Stutzla is hard a shooter. Isn't that crazy? Because I don't think anyone would even have Casty on their ballot for fastest skater on this team. So that definitely was interesting. And uh, it, it would have been uh, really nice to get a stream of these skills competitions going on. But maybe maybe next year with Ryan Reynolds in the building, we'll, uh, we'll get a little more entertainment there. Got to... Get fans to buy tickets, Pillsy. If you wanted to see what happened, you could have made the drive. It's true. It's true. Fair. <laughs> no, no. In all seriousness, I do agree. However, the Senators already put out one great piece of content with Rebecca Leslie and Jamie Lee Rattray, kind of highlighting the two women's players who were uh, able to take part and showed well. Of course, Rebecca Leslie, kind of a fun story is that she was captain of Boston University's women's hockey team the same time that Brady Kachuk was a freshman. So they have somewhat of a relationship there. And of course, I already mentioned Jamie Laratre used to snipe on me in, in Pee Wee Double A. And, and now she's obviously gone on to do great things with the women's national team. I believe a two-time Olympic gold medalist uh, for her. So great piece of content there. And Pilsy, I don't think it ends there because boots on the ground reporting, Cam Talbot was wearing a GoPro. So we might get some good footage there. 
Oh, okay. That's good. Nice. I like that. Yeah. So just not day of content. I would have liked to having one of the content guys kind of buzzing around out there, maybe all dressed in all white, like the world juniors yeah. uh, camera guys, right? We're getting right up in their grill, but uh, I'm sure more content is coming. The senators after tonight don't play until Thursday. So it's a pretty quiet stretch from last Tuesday yeah. to next Thursday, only four games. And you know, the way the Sens have been going the last month before Christmas, it was like eight games in that amount of time. It felt like every other night I was just waiting for a double header. We were getting that close where you play two in one day, but uh, the senators head out on the road after tonight, they'll be in Arizona at mullet arena on Thursday. That to say, um, what else surprised you about the skills competition? We are of course going to get into a full game day preview later on in the show sends and Matt Duchesne comes back to town. Yep. Uh, I mean, Drake Batherson with the hardest shot at 103.9 miles per hour. Sheesh. Like, that's the thing. I was trying to think of guys that could just, like, have that heavy release where it's not all power. It's about, like, intense release. And Batherson, that's one of those guys. I mean, his goal that he scored, uh, I don't think it was – was it against the Kraken or the game before where it just hit off the bar and in? That was an absolute laser. I think that was Columbus that he had that goal. Like, he has a hard shot. It may not be a big lumbering slap shot, but that guy can rip it. Yes, he certainly can. And Shane Pinto got the quickest accuracy shooting. He hit all four targets in just a shade over seven seconds. Now, nice. the Sense media saying that's the quickest since Daniel Sedin at the NHL All-Star Game in 2012. <laughs> that All-Star Game happened in that same net in Ottawa. But... <laughs> I don't think they're taking part in every other team's skills contest, right? So I don't know if we're going to go with a record like that. Yeah, uh, Josh Norris, he won the accuracy um, competition, the non-speed timed one. So that really wasn't a surprise. If I would have known Josh Norris was competing in that, he would have been my guy for sure. Yeah, so he's just been in practice. He's now competing in this. They're just seriously taking the be-all be all conservative approach where yep. if he's not a hundred and what is, what does DJ say? 110%. Yep. If he's or not a thousand percent, a thousand, that's what he did. It was, it yeah. was, I was probably talking about Matt Murray though. He's got to be a thousand percent to play, but with, uh, with Norris, like all-star break, like early February is like no timeline. I, I think that's appropriate. I think some, sometime around the all-star break for sure. Like I wasn't expecting him to come in early or even mid January. So I think late January, early February, we could see him, but again, who knows? It's great for the vibes that he's around the team. Yeah. That's what I do know for sure. And when he comes back, certainly you saw him, he, he dominated Pinto in the relay race as well. So you're, you're looking at a guy who clearly, is one of the more skilled players on this team and deserves the long-term extension he got. It's just a real yeah. shame five games into it, he was uh, injured again with the same same shoulder, different injury, as his DJ said. But great to see uh, no surgery and that it seems like he's doing well because it's not like he comes back to practice once and then he's off for a few days, then he comes back. He's been a consistent yep. participant every single practice so we can't wait for Josh Norris to come back. I can't wait to get my package from Farm to Fork. We're going to get into our friends at Farm to Fork, but we want to tee up that the Winnipeg Sens, is that going to be a thing? Where's Philip Nordberg playing? All that coming up here on Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by Ross. I'm going to go with our friends over at Athletic Greens. They are the number one nutritional way to start your day off, right? It's the way I start my day off, Ross, because it's just one simple scoop in a cup of water. That's something even a simple guy like me can handle every morning. And being perfectly honest, I love Athletic Greens because it gets me 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, uh, they're super sourced, super food, probiotics, and more to start my day off right. There's so many benefits to it. This is why I love it. It's you get health, help, sorry, for your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus. Maybe I need a little more focus, aging, your hair, your skin, your nails, all that comes with benefits from Athletic Greens. It tastes great. It's 
cheaper than your coffee habit. If you're going to Starbucks every day, switch that up and have Athletic Greens every day. And there's so many five-star reviews. It's not just guys like me that like it. Athletes, it's trusted by leading health experts and more. So guys, you need to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with a convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop in your cup of water. That's it. It's easy. And to make it easier, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutrition insurance. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends at Farm. To Fork. Our friends at Farm to Fork have been providing Ottawa, the GTA, and Montreal with premium meat and seafood that's flash frozen and never anything but perfect. I'm on their website right now. I'm going to pull it up here if you're watching on YouTube. It's so easy to navigate, and the best part is whatever you want, they've got. If you want strip loin, boom. You want a variety pack? Of course, top sirloin, filet mignon, they've got it all. I'm talking bacon, hot dogs, even ham if you want to treat the family. You want some bacon rack chicken breasts? I know Pillsy's all over the chicken. How about bacon wrap subs? That's always a crowd pleaser, whether it's for a little amouche or a little bit of a main course. You can serve that with a risotto or something nice. They've got pork loins, they've got barbecue bundle. I'm a big fan of just stocking the freezer completely full when I go to my friends at Farm to Fork. And the beauty about Farm to Fork as well is it's a local company, so you're supporting local, and we also love them just as much as they love the Sens. That's why our promo code is ZOOB15. ZOOB15. To remind you that farm2forkdelivery.ca has the number two. Farm2forkdelivery.ca. Use promo code ZOOB15 for 15 off. You have to go check them out, and it's unreal how quick the delivery happens. If you order on a Monday or Tuesday, you'll have it on Thursday. It's that quick, and then make sure that you are never caught with your hands up saying, where's my protein for tonight's dinner? Always have Farm to Fork on Dash, and you'll never go back to grocery store meats after you try our friends at Farm to Fork, farm to fork delivery.ca and use our promo code ZOO15. All right, Pilsy. Zach Ostapchuk is joining the Winnipeg Ice. (laughs) Joining Carson Latimer there. Joining two first-round picks, two top 11 picks in Matthew Savoy and Connor Geeky, and a top 10 pick in this upcoming NHL draft, Zach Benson. That's a wagon. And did you see what the Vancouver Giants were able to get for Zach Ostapchuk? Yep, well, I've got it right here, Ross, as the Winnipeg Ice, or I think they mean the Winnipeg Sens, have acquired Zach Ostapchuk from the Vancouver Giants in exchange for forwards Skylar Bruce and Connor Dale, so two forwards, prospects Hudson Landmark and Owen Breeze. A prospect for the WHL, what is this, like 14-year-old kids? Yeah, literally. (laughs) It's crazy. And then this is where it gets wild. A first and a fifth round pick in 2024, a first round pick in 2025, and a first round pick in 2026. So from 2024, 2025, and 2026, the uh, Ice have traded away their first round picks to acquire Zach Ostapchuk and well earned because you mentioned it, Ross, a team that's already a wagon in Winnipeg adding not only Carson Latimer, the mayor from Prince Albert Raiders, but now Zach Stapchuk in that mix. This team is going to be nasty. Zach Stapchuk, 29 points in 21 games as the captain of the Vancouver Giants. And get this, I know he's played uh, 10 to 12 less games because the last month he spent with Team Canada at the World Juniors, but he comes in and he's seventh in team scoring. That's how much of a wagon the Winnipeg Ice are 
right now. But with Ostapchuk, I don't know what kind of role, if he's going to just hop in on the top two lines or if he's going to be more of a matchup, like kind of the role that he played at the World Juniors. I'm really interested to see how they use him because that is just a complete weapon that they've added up front. This is already the first place team in the Eastern Conference in the WHL. The rich get richer. And this is the perfect time to go all in because I, I think it happened after they moved to Winnipeg. But this is how junior works, right? Like you get rid of all your players, you get a million draft picks, and sometimes you get lucky like the the ice did. They had the first and second overall pick in the 2019 draft, Savoy, Geeky. Well, guess what? This is likely their last year before they move on to the NHL. So load up. Do it. This is going to be the year. Kamloops is loading up in the West, getting Olin Selweger from the World Junior Squad. They already have Logan Stankoven and a whole host of others. So you got to compete with the best of the best, and it's going to be so much fun. I'll have, I think, January 22nd is the next date, I think, that I can get down to Wayne Fleming Arena, the Ice Cave, and go check them out. So expect some boots on the ground report, but I was so fired up. And thanks to everyone who... Uh, tagged me in Jeff Merrick's post. That was awesome to see. Absolutely love the community that uh, that's being built here uh, between Sens fans and the prospect world, Pilsy, where let's stay in my neck of the woods and then we'll move overseas. Tyler Clevin, have a weekend. Back-to-back two-goal games. Yeah, that's insane for uh, for a guy like Tyler Clevin to be putting the puck in the back of the net like that and uh, – He's he's more of a goal scorer as a defenseman than a guy that racks up assists, which is wild to think. But it's nice to see Tyler Clevin start to heat up because he's going to have to really heat up as uh, the Nodak sends. They get closer and closer to a really important hockey coming up. Yeah, John Butchergross with ESPN has North Dakota as the 15th ranked team in the nation yeah. right now. But Tyler Clevin, those were two important goals. The team they played, Lindenwood, I mean, Sens Prospect was asking me, who the heck are these guys? They're a first-year Div 1 program, but they've had some close games against like Denver, against Nodak, and they were winning in both the games this weekend. And both times, Tyler Clevin nice. scores the game-winning goal. So not only were they just kind of one-timers from the, the hash marks, we know he can do that, uh, all four, I believe, on the power play, if not three out of four, but he's scoring big-time goals. And now he has 17 goals in 80 college games as a – shut down a oh, one variable defenseman according yeah. to EP back in the day. Well, I think there's some variance to the way he's putting the puck in the back of the net. So love to see that from the K train, but Pilsy, a player who could potentially be like the K train. Hey, we have no idea what this guy's going to be like because he is a mythical creature, but the second round pick first selection for the Sens in this past draft, Philip Nordberg, he's changing area codes as well. Yeah, and this is interesting because uh, Philip Norberg has been loaned to, oh boy, Vaxjo? No Alex clue Lee. if I got that right. Yeah, Alex is going to have to let us know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But uh, it really seems like this promotion, uh, from what Sens Prospect, our buddy at Sens Prospect is saying, that Nordberg is getting close to an entry-level contract with Ottawa, and the Sens already want him in the USHL. So, Maybe this is just one step closer to that happening, and we would love to see that because, as you mentioned, kind of a mythical creature. If we could get him over to North America and get him acclimated to this style of game and get to view him a little bit more easy than we do over in Sweden, I'm down for that. And uh, he seems like he could be a stud. Yeah, I have no idea what he's going to be like, but it is great to see him get an opportunity playing against the top team, right? Because even when he's playing against men – in Sweden, and by the way, it's definitely changing area codes. Soder Tejal, I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering these Swedish. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's basically a suburb of Stockholm, which right. is where Nordberg is from. Vaxjo is like, you're you're looking at closer to Denmark here, at least on its way. A nice five-hour journey. We'll have to get Nordberg on okay. to talk about uh, the beauty of that drive, um, as we did with Lassie and, and Roby uh, about Finland. But yeah, it's, it's great to see because when he's playing in the top level in in where he was, it was only the Allsvenskan. So he didn't yeah. even have a chance, if he wanted to, to play at the top level. So now he's playing in the SHL. We'll see how he does against that competition. He had four points in 25 games in the Allsvenskan, plus four, only six penalty minutes, which I think is pretty impressive to see, even though the ice time probably wasn't there each and every night. So 
I'll be interested. In his last game uh, before the move, he had a goal and an assist in the J20 League. His last game as captain of that team. So he finishes off that junior year with 11 points in 18 games. But we'll be keeping our eye on it, and hopefully he comes over to North America sooner rather than later. Yeah, that would be great. And uh, Ross, I've got to report this about uh, our next prospect here because uh, it's it's become a bit and a running joke for me. Stephen Halliday, three assists on Saturday in a 6 nothing win. And uh, Halliday has eight points on his current four-game point streak. And this guy, <laughs> he just racks up so many assists. It's hilarious that I called him not much of a disher as Sens Prospects likes to remind me his second three apple game this season. So Stephen Halliday is a disher, guys. I am willing to say that he is a disher. And not only did you just say it as a take, you said it to his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? I'm not a disher. I was first in the league in assists last year. That was awesome. Uh, we got to catch oh, boy. Halliday. Good guy. Good kid. Yep. Looking forward to uh, to chatting with him sooner rather than later. Hey, speaking about uh, dishers, we've got a few of those in Belleville right now as they continue to play exceptional hockey, getting a 6-1 victory over the weekend and yeah. really just dominant fashion. And the players you want to see doing well are doing just that. Like Igor's been unbelievable. Ridley mm-hmm. Gregg has four multi-point games in his last five outings during this five-game point streak. So these guys have come to play. Igor's got six points in his last t- to three games, including yeah. a hat trick and an assist performance. The The Belleville Sens have won three games in a row. Sorry, the 6-1 win was against uh, Manitoba. They went in a shootout on Friday against Syracuse and yeah. beat the wheels off of Rochester last week. So seems like a good time to catch up with their head coach, Jay Pills. Yeah, I'm very excited. We're working on getting Troy Mann on the show. That's, that's going to be an... Really interesting conversation for us because Troy Mann, if you guys haven't watched his post game pressers, he is just so kind of intelligent and he's on it. He's honest and he thinks about his answers and he and he really gives the media, especially our guy Footy, uh, a really great time and quotes every time. So I'm pumped up to have that on our show. And Ross, don't look now, but the Belleville Senators are back in a playoff position in their division. So that is absolutely huge. And their next game is going to be up against the Cleveland Monsters on Friday. So they basically get a week off. So we're hoping that they can really kind of keep that going up against a division team and stay in that fourth position there. I can't believe the variance at the AHL level because they were tied for last place and they were in last place in the division just a week ago. Yep, it's, it's a tight race in that division, and all the Senators need to do is get in fourth, and uh, I think anything can happen in the playoffs. And we're hoping they can get healthy too. Lassie Thompson, yes. Roby Yarventi, both still week-to-week week out with injury. So we'll follow that as well as they continue on with the Belleville Senators looking to make a push here without two of their top four leading scorers still in the NHL, that being Jake Lucini and Rourke Jartier. Next up, Friday... Belleville hosts the Cleveland Monsters, so they've got the whole week off to practice and have Troy Mann potentially on Locked On Center. Stay tuned for all that. Also, stay tuned on the other side of the break. We're going to get into a full game day preview. The Nashville Predators, similar season to the Ottawa Senator in a way. We'll get into that next here on Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. You got to go to betonline.net and find all the latest news, scores, podcasts, odds, player performance props. They really have it all. You can head there and make sure that you got some action in on the NFL playoffs that are coming up. How about tonight? Tonight is the national championship for college football. Pilsy, correct me if I'm wrong, Georgia, TCU? Is that where we're at? I think so. I, I don't follow college ball as closely as I should uh, with NFL and hockey. There's not much room left in my brain for college ball, but no matter who's playing, that's always a wild, wild game. If you put a trophy on the line, I don't care what sport it is, I'm going to watch. Yeah, fair. Yep. And not only watch, I'm probably going to put a little action in And When I do, I head over to betonline.net. So make sure you get there too. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Visit betonline.net. It's where the game 
starts. All right, Pilsy. 7.30 puck drop tonight. Note the start time. 7.30. Weekday start at the Canadian Tire Centre in Canada, Ontario. The Senators wrapping up a four-game homestand that started with a win against the Buffalo Sabres. It continued with a shutout victory over the Columbus Blue Jackets. But then it really came crashing down. An 8-4 loss to the Seattle Kraken where they allowed eight goals on 24 shots and Do not go look at the Ottawa Senators' goaltending stats because both of them were sewered by that performance. However, it's a new day. The Nashville Predators come to town. No Mark Borowiecki, which is too bad. I I love when when Mark Borowiecki is playing in the NHL. I'm sure some Sens forwards might be thinking, hey, it's not the worst thing in the world. Keep your head up when Boro cops out patrolling the blue line. But we're wishing Boro all the best as he continues his recovery after a scary incident early on this season great to see he got the financial stability of that three-year contract in nashville or two year and then he got the extension on top of it but um no borvietsky in the lineup but there will be us sends abroad as matt duchene makes his return pilsy why don't you run through the nashville predators lines here and then we'll get your lookout player all right so we've got forsberg with Parsonen and Sissons as a top line probably not a top line you'd expect to see in nashville then we've got Jankowski with Ryan Johansson and Matt Duchesne. Nino Niederreiter, Cody Glass, and Mikel Granlund. Then we've got Trennan, Novak, and Tanner Janot. And this decor is a tough defensive unit. McDonough and Roman Yossi, that's one hell of a first pair. Ekholm with Carrier and Lazon with Fabro. And in goal, we're not sure if it's going to be UC Soros or Kevin Lankinen, but the Predators have not played since Friday. They actually got to Ottawa on Saturday, so they've been around for a while. It's going to be interesting to see how that affects their performance. Yeah, as we had boots on the ground reports, they were at the Nordic Spa on, on Sunday, spending the day there. Uh, they are 18, 14, and 6 on the season, 6 2 and 2 in their last 10 games, and currently riding a three-game win streak. Their top scorer is Philip Forsberg, who has 34 points in 38 games after re-signing with Nashville. Remember in the summer, Pilsy, that moment where we're like, wait, why is Philip Forsberg in Ottawa? We have reports coming out that he is in Ottawa. (laughs) Yeah. And then he tweeted out, turns out he was just going to a wedding. But hey, great to know that uh, he got to see downtown Ottawa, which is a little bit different than the Brook Street and Canada, Ontario. No disrespect to those out in in Canada but this uh, Preds team they're turning a corner as well they had a brutal start to the season and now they're winning games as I mentioned six two and two points in eight of their last 10 games what kind of matchup are you expecting tonight the second and final matchup against the Nashville Predators after Ottawa got the road win in Nashville on the father's trip three two was the score in that game Ottawa outshot Nashville 33 29 in that one Are we going keys to victory to start then? Yeah, or just what kind of game are you expecting from these guys? Well, I'll I'll, uh, kind of mend it into my keys to victory here as the Nashville Predators, they've really done a good job balancing their lines. Like if you take a look at those lines, they don't have the top six loaded with their top paid guys. Like top line is Forsberg, Parsonen, and Colton Sissons. Like... Parsonins is a very unknown guy. And then Sissons is a guy who's typically in your bottom six, kind of a grinder type guy. And then even the the next line, they've uh, balanced out a little um, with Duchesne and Johansson there. So I think this is a team where they're going to roll all four lines, similar to the Seattle Kraken, but they got a little more firepower up front and on the back end. So they have depth mixed in with, you got a top guy in Forsberg on front, and then on the back, you got a top guy in Yossi. So they have those game changers. And UC Saros, he may not be a big guy in stature, but he can have big nights as he's been a really good goalie for them the last couple of years since Pekka left. So if up against the Nashville Predators, my key to victory, Ross, is dominate the special teams. Let's be honest. That's how the Ottawa Senators win hockey games most of the time. And in Ian Mendez's article, Ross, 
The Ottawa Senators are 29th in the league in even strength goals with 63. With those eight goals, the Seattle Kraken got at even strength. They are first in the league with 100 even strength goals. So, like, that's... You're talking about 37 more even strength goals here from the Seattle Kraken to the Ottawa Senators. This team cannot get it done even strength. Mind you, when you have a lot of guys out like Matt Joseph, Josh Norris, Tyler Mott, those guys really fill in the cracks even strength and really help out. But I think if the Ottawa Senators are going to get it done uh, up against the Nashville Predators... I want to see them dominate on even strength, especially Ross. We talked about the penalty kill being really good. The Nashville Predators are 28th in the league with power play percentage at 18%. So let's see the special teams remain strong here. And not only that, to your point, the Ottawa Senators had two power play goals in that 3-2 win in Nashville yeah, there you go. Um, to get the victory. Now, Nashville doesn't score a lot of goals overall. They're fourth last, fifth last in the mm-hmm. NHL with 106 goals, only one more than the Montreal Canadiens. So just to put in in reference where they are when it comes to goal scoring, and that's a little surprising because they had 240 goal scorers last year in Matt Duchesne and Philip Forsberg. So they've all taken kind of a step backwards, and I wonder if splitting up the lines the way they have has kind of negatively, negatively affected that because think of all the nights where Ottawa might not have their bottom six going. But the Stutzla, Kachuk, Giroux yeah. line will contribute two or three goals. They don't seem to have that go-to line. It's probably the Johansson, Duchesne line, but still, I don't think that's one of the scarier lines in the league, even still. So maybe they move Forsberg down to play with those guys in certain situations and and kind of create a top line. But I think the way that they have things all shaken out right now, Ottawa's kind of in a good spot. Now, my lookout player tonight is going to be Roman Yossi. He's not on the same trajectory as he was last year where he had 96 points. Are you kidding me? Almost breaking 100 points last year, finishing sixth in the Hart Trophy voting and second in Norris. 96 points, and he didn't even win the Norris. Like yeah. That just shows you how great of a year Kale McCarr had. I think both of them were the, um, were the nominees and worthy winners, even though, uh, of course, Roman Yossi goes home empty-handed. He also has dominated Ottawa in the past. What he scored a milestone goal, I think, last year against Ottawa. I yeah, know that he did. I know that he's done well overall against the Senators, but in his career, 17 points in 18 games while averaging almost 25 and a half minutes against the Sen. So I'm gonna be keeping my eye out against uh, of Roman Yossi. And I love the way that they put him on his offside now, which I'm gonna be interested to see how that affects him in the offensive zone getting pucks up along the boards because I think something that he does really well is moves off the boards, getting the puck to the middle of the ice and getting his shots through traffic. So I'm curious to see when he's on his offside, how that extra split second where he has to bring it from his backhand to forehand, where it goes. But when you have the Mack truck, Ryan McDonough (laughs) on your team now, and he helped out the Sens the other night, they were playing Washington and he scored in the last two minutes to give Nashville the victory. Huge. We've got a defensive defenseman like Ryan McDonough. I'll be interested to see how that yin and yang pair goes on Nashville's back end. Yeah, I mean, anytime Roman Yossi is playing in any game, you, you got to have your eyes on him. He's just a, a stud defenseman. I'm looking it up, and it was, was – no, I thought he had a hat trick for some reason against Ottawa, but it was simply a three-assist night. That's all, Pills. <laughs> yeah, ho hum. Uh, now you went for probably the most marketable, well-known guy in this natural predators team. Very handsome dude, Roman Yossi. Not to say my lookout player isn't handsome. I don't really know what this guy looks like, Ross. It's number one centerman, Yuso Parsonen. And I had to look this guy up because I was like, how is this guy? We've never heard of him playing top line center with Philip Forsberg on this team where there's a decent amount of center depth well <laughs> no okay all right uh ricochet shot by you so there or for you so but he is a seventh round pick 210th overall ross in the 2019 draft but this gets a stud because he's only 21 years old and he already has one two three four years in Liga experience and last year with Liga he played 41 games and had 32 points as a 20 year old and right now with Nashville Predators he has 12 points in 24 games he's definitely a disher 
I will say that about Parsonen. Uh, but this makes that first line really interesting because you've got Philip Forsberg, your bona fide sniper. Then you've got Parsonen, a guy who's a playmaker. Like all his uh, years in the Finnish league, he has way more assists. In 55 games the year before, he had eight goals and 34 assists. So this guy is just dishing the puck out. So you've got a guy that can feed Forsberg the puck. And then on the right wing, you've got Colton Sissons, your grinder type guy that's going to win those board battles and get the loose puck to either one of those guys. So as a line, the makeup and the combination of these three guys, I think can be really effective. So I'm going to be looking out for Parson in here and seeing if he can dish it like uh, it really seems like he can. Yeah, only three goals in 24 games. You mentioned nine assists as well, but I'll be interested too because I think that if that line's going to do damage, it's going to be Philip Forsberg carrying them offensively. But I'm going to be watching too because I told you this morning, it's almost like that Columbus decor. I was like, who is this guy? Like We pride ourselves. We watch a lot of hockey, not only the the Sens, but we try to keep our our pulse on what's going on in the league, our finger on the pulse. And uh, I'd never heard of Yusuf Parsonen before today. And that's probably on me, six foot three, two hundred and twelve pounds. So I'll be looking out for him as well. A little bonus lookout player, Yakov Trenin, always seems to bring his A game, whether it's physicality or mm. uh, getting on the score sheet against Ottawa. The former Gatineau Olympique had the uh, game opening goal for for Nashville when they met last time. Before I get to my lockdown player, I skipped over my key to victory, and that is Pepper the Preds goal. With shots. Now, Nashville gives up a ton of shots. Fourth most shots against in the NHL. The only teams that give up more, Arizona, Columbus, and Anaheim. I know they've tightened it up a little bit recently, but they rely on their goaltenders a whole heck of a lot. UC Saros face more rubber than a lot of goalies in the league, and we know the Sens always get back up, so we'll probably get Lankin in tonight. Unconfirmed at the time of this recording, but just everything on net. Ottawa only got 23 shots on goal against Seattle. Right, They scored four times on 23 shots. Imagine what they would have done if they had 35 shots. It might have been even. It might have been a Kings cracking game where it's 9-8 yeah. in overtime. Get pucks on net. Puck, simplify. It's the last game before you go down on the road. Simplify. This is a big game. We're not putting a title on it, but this is a big game to leave the fans with a good taste in their mouth. The, the crowd's been 100% over this last homestand, even before, like the Boston game at home during the Christmas break, everything. The crowd's been into it. Leave them on a high note. Get, let's put it this way. Send get 38 shots or more, they win the game. Okay. There you go. Who's your locked on player? My locked on player, I'm glad you snapped it over to me because I was worried you're going to take it. Tim Stutzla. I mean, oh <laughs> my God. God, since this guy has been back, uh, he's been absolutely killing it, Ross. In seven games when he returned on um, the 22nd of December against Washington, he has 12 points in those games. Only two of those games without a goal, and he had an assist in that time. He's got eight goals in his last seven games. Tim Sutzla is on an absolute heater. He is our superstar. He also is tied for the NHL lead in points since the holiday break. He has 11 points in six games. Mm -hmm. He's nearing 21 years old, nearing legal drinking age in the United States. Yeah, next week, I think. Yeah, the 15th. And he's already our superstar. So you love to see the way he's been developing his all-around game. I'm going to stick on the back end, though, Pilsy. I think this is going to be a good matchup. I already had Roman Yossi, so I'm going to go with Thomas Shabbat. 22 points on the year, but offensively isn't where I'm looking for tonight. I'm actually going to be looking for those minutes to go back down to where we prefer them. The last few games have been getting out of hand. Over 28 minutes against Seattle. Yep. Over 26 minutes in a, in a 4 nothing shutout win. Why is he yeah, playing, why is he playing that much? Yeah, I agree. I have no idea. DJ's getting a little carried away here. That game against Boston, I know it was overtime. 31 minutes. 28-42 against Washington. He hasn't played less than 23 and a half minutes since that victory against Detroit on December 17th. And that was a super special teams battle where Ottawa led once the third period started. It was kind of put away. Control his ice time. And by proxy, I want to see what Jake Sanderson and Travis Hamnick are going to do after they were each dash four in that Seattle game. So, I'm watching the whole sense decor, but when you need the entire core of all six of them to step up, you got to look at the leader 
and that's Thomas Shabbat. So I'll be locked on him tonight. Yep, I like it. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting game as both these teams in the standings are battling for a wild card, but they still got to leapfrog a couple tough teams and they're still a little bit out of it here. So they're pushing, jockeying for that position. So even though they're different conferences and there's not really any sort of rivalry against the Sens and Preds other than the Sens would have destroyed them in the 2017 Stanley Cup Finals. This is a big game. These points matter. So I'm very excited for this game. Any final thoughts on today's show? Final thoughts is uh, going to hit the people with the go sends go as this is a 7.30 start. I love the 7.30 starts personally. I think that's great. You get a little extra time to finish uh, cleaning up from dinner. So 7.30 start. Nashville Predators up against the Ottawa Senators. Go Sens, go! All right, we'll see you in the postcast. Jack Richardson will be joining Pilsy tonight in the postcast. And my final thoughts on this is leave the fans with something nice after what you've put them through. I also want to tease that tomorrow we are going to unveil our list of top 10 Sens prospects today. Now, we put it out on Twitter yesterday, so if you want to go cheat and and find out there. But we had some questions and some people moving people up and down. Mm. We're going to get into where the tiers are, yep. who could rise by the end of the year, and who's fallen since the last time we did that. All that's coming up tomorrow. Enjoy the game tonight. Remember, subscribe to the Locked On Senators podcast on YouTube and put that notification bell on. The postcast will be live following tonight's game after the National Predators. But if you miss any of the live postcasts, you can always catch up on it on your favorite audio podcast platform or on YouTube. It lives on our channel there. You can also follow the show at Send Central on Twitter, locked on, dot senators on Instagram. We'll see you tonight. For today, though, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan, and this has been the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day. <laughs>